I am guessing that more people will join. Um, let me just see. The transcript, I think, is turned on, so we will just turn that off. Um, but uh, hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for yet another um, event that is happening within our CGHI uh, Young Professional Series. Um, as some of you know, um, let me see. I'm letting more people know, uh, more people join in, so sorry for the disruption. <laughs> um, OK, so as you know, uh, this series is meant to showcase and um, introduce us to some of the careers um, our young professionals have within the global health sphere. So um, today we are um, lucky to have uh, Jovana join us um, as the speaker and kind of give us an introduction to the big world of uh, pharmaceutical sciences. Um, obviously, this event is happening um, and is organized by uh, CGHI, Coalition for Global Health um, Innovation. And as uh, most of you know, um, CGHI is a registered nonprofit uh, organization by early career professionals for early career professionals. And basically, what we do is we empower young professionals to transform their um, innovative ideas into actionable uh, projects. Uh, my name is Jelena Brankovic. Um, yes, obviously I am logged in from a different account, but uh, spare me, <laughs> uh, we have some troubles. Um, so today, uh, as I mentioned, we have uh, the opportunity to listen to Jovana's story. So without further ado, um, I will let uh, Jovana take the floor, uh, introduce herself and um, tell us more about what she does in the big world of clinical trials. Jovana, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Elena. I am super excited to be here today. And I think I've introduced myself like a million times in my life. And sometimes I like I still manage to make it a bit awkward. So <laughs> please bear with me today. And I see that we have a smaller group today. So if anybody has any questions at any time, or if you notice that I'm talking gibberish, like please feel free to interrupt me. <laughs> So my name is Jovana Ilkic. I'm based in Serbia and I have, as Jovana mentioned, uh, a background in pharmaceutical sciences. I've studied pharmaceutical sciences and I'm currently doing a PhD in digitalization of pharmacy care in Serbia. And in parallel, I am working in a clinical trials. And I've been involved with uh, CGHI since its birth, so I'm very happy to see it still flourishing. And finally, I have a lot of artsy hobbies. So <laughs> that's me in short. <laughs> and um, I guess we can start with providing more details about like studying pharmacy and pharmaceutical sciences and how I decided to enter that field. Um, like back in 2014, I, you know, I was finishing high school. I, I was interested in everything and nothing. <laughs> so when I was trying to figure out like what I want to do, um, pharmacy came up as something that could still allow me to study a lot of things because, you know, when you study pharmacy, you also study, you, you don't learn only about drugs. You learn about 60 other different sciences and health and, um, and uh, natural science field. So, so I thought like that could still allow me some, uh, sorry, I'm so nervous, even though we've done this a lot of times. So yeah, I thought that could allow me some, uh, like a wide scope and options, like once I finish, uh, thank you. So, uh, so yeah, I thought like when I, I'll still have some time to figure out what I want to do in my life while I study. And then afterwards, when I finish, I'll still have a lot of options in case I figure out that pharmacy isn't really my thing. And yeah, so, you know, I feel um, like I, 
like I didn't make that many decisions in my life, you know, it's just like you decide to, you try things and sometimes they work out. And you know, that was like my path in pharmacy. Somehow things were just working out. You know, like studying pharmacy is hard. There's like a million things that you have to do. So I did cry a lot, but it was actually really fun as um, I, and I mean, crying wasn't fun, but like the entire journey was fun because I volunteered a lot. And I would recommend that to anybody who is still a student. You know, like it's always great if you could get a paying job, but if you can't, like if that's not an option at that time, uh, use your spare time to volunteer because that would still give you a lot of valuable experience and skills. And I think CGHI is a great organization to, to do that. So um, once I finished my master's in pharmacy in 2019, um, I was still trying to figure out what I want to do. Like, should I uh, start like working in an actual pharmacy? Should I um, find a position in an industry or should I like try something that's like totally unrelated to this? I actually applied to become like a flight attendant, but yeah, but they rejected me, so I had to. So I stayed here, <laughs> and um, and uh, because I was a part of the educational system for my entire life, practically, I decided to pursue a PhD, and um, I chose the department of social pharmacy because um, that's like a pharmacy version of public health. And that's something that I grown an interest in. Uh, but if somebody would ask me, like, would I still do it? Like when I turn around and um, I don't know, like <laughs> I would study business or something like that, probably. If <laughs> If I could. <laughs> and also, like when it comes to PhD, like my, um, I feel like a lot of people go into that same as me. You know, it makes sense. Like you've studied your whole life and you just want to continue doing that because that's your comfort zone. But I would never advise to do it just for the heck of it because it's really hard, <laughs> especially when you don't know what you want to do. And um, and I didn't like I figured out what I'm going to do along the way as I had a really nice mentor. I still have it, have her and uh, fingers crossed I'll be finishing my PhD next year. But uh, yeah, but almost there. Uh, but still, it was a very rocky road um, because I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So I was just figuring staying, figuring things out along the way. But on the other hand, you know, there are people like me who just like go go for it and uh, make mistakes. But on the other hand, like there are a lot of people who are afraid of making mistakes and then decide to do nothing. And uh, I don't think like there's a right way to live your life. But when in doubt, <laughs> there is no doubt. <laughs> like you always know what you want to do at the end of the day. Um, so, but yeah, like as I was doing a PhD and when you're doing a PhD, but you aren't employed at the university in Serbia, uh, you don't get money for it. <laughs> you might even have to pay for it. <laughs> so what I had to do, like I, uh, I had to find a job, um, once I finished my university and my first job was actually as a regulatory affairs assistant in a pharmaceutical company. And it was, you know, just like that entry level office job. I was doing a lot of printing, filing, you know, even though it's like a, it's a fancy company, you know, I, I could put that in my resume. It wasn't a fancy position at all. Like <laughs> I was just chilling there around the office mingling and not because I wanted to mingle it's because I had to so <laughs> so but that was like my that's something that I started in 2019 and um in 2020 when the pandemic started uh and a lot of companies were downsizing I figured that I should probably find a new position because 
I didn't think that they're going to keep, I didn't think that they were going to keep me around. So I was applying for all sorts of positions in pharmaceutical industry. And um, I got a job in clinical trials. And it was also an entry level position. And I also applied for something to be like regulatory because that's what I had experience in, so to say. But it kind of, they've, um, instead of like keeping me in the regulatory team, they've shifted me to the contracts team. And I still work in a side contracts department and within the clinical trials industry. And it's a very strange department actually, because it doesn't have to do much with pharmacy. Um, it's actually more on a business level, like what my team does, we are in touch with hospitals all around the world, trying to arrange like with them to participate in clinical trials. So basically we negotiate with hospitals around the world and also negotiate with the sponsors, uh, the clinical, sorry, the um, pharmaceutical companies that are developing new drugs. Um, to to find the hospitals where they can actually test the medicines that they're developing. And uh, and like like and somehow I'm like still there. <laughs> I don't feel like I found my spot uh, beneath the sun, but um, but you know, like I'm still figuring things out in life. <laughs> I think like that's um, a sentiment for most early career professionals where you know you always feel like you should be doing more you should be doing better in life because because you look around and you see your peers doing great and having their cool jobs and looking great and traveling and then you look at yourself sitting you know sitting at uh, your couch looking like a potato questioning everything <laughs> especially because like we are the generation like of social media so so there is a lot of that pressure too but um you know something that early career professionals also need to learn is to to pat themselves on the back saying like we're getting there you know it's it's fine if you're not if you're not um doing amazing when you're 27 <laughs> You know, I feel like, um, so yeah, that's, that's a sentiment I'm trying to get in my head. Not sure if I'm succeeding, you know, <laughs> but I try. <laughs> um, so that was my story. It's not actually that exciting or exotic. It's, it's just a pathway, like how I found my way in pharmaceutical industry. You know, if anybody would decide to go into pharmaceutical industry or like pharmacy, you don't really have to have an educational background in pharmacy or pharmaceutical sciences because the people who I work with, like not many of them actually studied pharmacy. They studied like medicine, stomatology, but also business, law, anthropology, economics. So, uh, and also like sciences like chemistry or biology, microbiology. So what... I've learned also through my studies is that, you know, it doesn't matter that much what you studied, like, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> so yeah, what do I say? It doesn't really matter what you study because when you get that degree in like 80 or maybe even 90% of the cases, like that's only a proof that you committed to a long-term project and actually finished it. <laughs> Like in most jobs, like you will learn what you need to learn when you join the company. Of course, like that doesn't apply to medicine because I hope you learn how to treat people during your studies. But um, but at least in my case, because I was always uh, involved on a business development roles in business development roles, it didn't really matter that much at the end of the day. However, it doesn't mean that uh, it doesn't matter at all and that it might not matter one day if I decide to join another department or another role or another field. And um, and since we're discussing like, hmm, okay, 
one more thing. <laughs> like when you finish pharmacy, even though I just gave like a motivational speech on how it doesn't matter that you finished pharmacy, like <laughs> but when you do like finish studies in pharmacy, um, there are a lot of options for for people who want to to get a job. Like obviously you can work in a pharmacy. And like, if you ever studied uh, pharmacy, like they always tell you that that's your only option, but it, it isn't really. Um, so when I figured that, I was, I was very excited <laughs> because I never saw myself working in a pharmacy. I even tried, but for a short time, but it never really clicked. And it's not that it isn't a very interesting position because those people like pharmacists, uh, support communities on a really important level because they are the healthcare worker that are really approachable and at least in Serbia if anybody needs a medical advice and cannot reach a doctor or a nurse they will go to a pharmacy and try to figure like try to get uh, support for their health issues. Um, so yeah, that's an option. And also like there are pharmacies on different level, like in different levels of um, healthcare systems, you can work on a primary, primary level, which are the pharmacists that are most available to everyone. But there are also like um, pharmacists and pharmacies and hospitals or clinical universities and clinical centers. So they work on a different level. Um, outside of like um, pharmacies, like what are the options? So there's industry, there's the industry and you have like a clinical trial industry where I work in. And there's also a gener more general pharma industry for medicines that have already been uh, developed and marketed. So those are not being tested and monitored like the medications that are in clinical trials and also those are the medication those are medications who are available and can be bought or yeah you can get <laughs> those medications um and both those industries offer a lot of different positions so there are medical positions scientific positions clinical positions admin position business development regulatory and all of them like have a million different uh, diverse roles within. So those are very exciting. If you don't see yourself working in an actual pharmacy and you would like to have a more, more office-like job, that's, that's something you can try. And, um, and also like if you don't want to work in an office, you would like to, I mean, there's always like an option to work from home, but if you would like to have um, a very, um, a more dynamic role, which is like on the go, there's an option to be a clinical research associate or, um, or to like be a med medical representative of a company. So those are roles who are actually going around your country or more like re like uh, countries in your region, visiting hospitals and collaborating with healthcare professionals to see like how are drugs uh, being prescri prescribed or used and tested and monitored. So a lot of options. Um, there's also an option like to work in education if that's something you would be interested in. Like you can work in high schools but also as um, uh, on fac faculties or at universities. And uh, I'm not sure like how you get those positions because at least in Serbia, it's really hard, but um, it's possible. And if you're passionate about academia and if you have like um, good academic results and you get noticed by professors during your studies, uh, and also like if like at least in Serbia, there is an option to start doing some research while you're still a student, like you don't have to wait to get into PhD or master's to do your research, like you can start doing some student research work and you get a mentor, like one of the professors from faculty 
that's that's a good way if you want if you know that you want to get into academia research or or higher education as a profession so that's that's something that can be done um there is also like there's an option to get involved with policies and government work and those are also a bit more difficult to get because you usually need a good recommendation to get those positions but it's also an option for somebody who finished pharmacy or pharmaceutical sciences as you can work on developing um, health related policies and that's that's really exciting and interesting especially to a lot of people who are interested in finding a connection between pharmacy and global health and uh, at least i that felt like an alien in global health for a really long time. I think I still do because um, I wasn't really sure if what I do could could count as global health. But then I met Irene Blomquist, who is, um, it, I met her through the coalition and she is an amazing person and also one of my role models. And she said, like, you can debate that literally anything is global health because the point of global health is to improve health like of a population on a global level and everything touches health of the population on a global level nowadays because we as humanity have so many issues <laughs> um so it kind of became clear in my head that developing new medication as that's what you do in clinical trials and um, providing those medications to the people who really need them and don't have like appropriate medica like therapy right now, but this medication could save their life matters. So, so yay, go global health and go pharmacy. <laughs> uh, on the other hand, like there is a lot of control, like uh, there is a lot of control, oh, long word, controversial side of pharmaceuticals, <laughs> because um, um, that is a very lucrative uh, industry. And, uh, and you know, like, I feel like if humans are doing it, there's always going to be some ethic, like, um, issues on an ethical level. <laughs> but, um, so I'm not going to justify that, like everything is perfect on this side. But what I can say is um, developing new medication and like keeping it on a, um, like with a high quality, it costs a lot of money <laughs> and pharmaceutical industry therefore has to have a lot of money in order to be able to invest into innovation and develop new innovative solutions. So like what we are trying to like what we are trying to do in the coalition or at least were is uh, figuring out ways how to to develop innovations with zero budgets but it definitely have helps a lot when you have a a really high budget <laughs> um so i don't know if I've said anything useful, but yeah, enough, please let me know if I can help anything yes, else. Uh, <laughs> I will join for a bit. Um, well, first of all, thank you, because I think that your story is actually very, uh, very inspiring to at least a lot of uh, pharmacy students out there. Uh, yeah, all of because us, some, like depressed preachers out there. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but I think sometimes, like you made a few good points that sometimes you don't really know how to navigate your career, and that is okay. Uh, but what I wanted to um, ask you, and maybe that can be answered, and also as a part of a new conversation, is um, maybe how did the coalition help you, like figure out what you want to do? were there any skills that you gained that help you do the work that you do today um, like how did that relate to the job that you currently have oh thank you yeah, i actually yeah forgot to talk about the coalition and how it ties in in my life so 2019 a big year in my life as i've um i was a part of the multiplied mentoring program 
And we also had that amazing opportunity to meet like our group of mentees met in Berlin during the World Health Summit in 2019. And we decided to to found like to yeah, to found the Coalition for Global Health. And um, I was I got that privilege of being asked to be the first president of the coalition. So I took the initiative. And I mean, I was I was crazy enough to say yes. So I took the initiative and and we founded the coalition and um, I was involved firstly as the president, then as a um, community building lead. And then currently I am involved as an advisor for innovation and action tank. And first thing that coalition helped me with a lot is my confidence. I feel, you know, like somebody once told me that it matters a lot uh, where you come from with like how you perceive yourself. And I am a young woman coming from Serbia from like working class family. And, you know, that kind of, I, I guess I always had that little voice in my head telling me you're not worthy, you're not good enough. Like you're never going to get like something cool you're gonna have like a boring job and a boring life and like everything you you know like you're destined to 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 fail but when I joined the coalition I actually realized that you know I am good enough <laughs> like and I was accepted very well by people who I like was immediately in love with because I met the most amazing people here and that's inspired me quite a lot to um, to keep working on myself and keep working on my ambitions because you know it's it's important to dream big and to want more and that's how I feel like wherever I arrive in life I'm like okay cool awesome I'm going to enjoy this moment but I'm also going to think where I want to be next because you know, life is a constant movement. So besides helping me with my confidence and inspiring me to live a nice life, <laughs> Coalition. Coalition helped me with like uh, organizational skills and communication skills because you are uh, involved with people from all around the world and um, that kind of helps you um, grow perspective, but also learn how to communicate with people from different cultures, even though everybody knows English, but it's still different. So I think it's also a good organization if you want to uh, grow some cultural awareness and learn about different cultures from all around the world. And uh, finally, that's the organization that helped me like always have a mindset of like trying to develop your idea further, like not to just uh, let it slip, but actually like if you have an idea, like why not try to go with it? And if it fails, like you failed already in life, like it doesn't change anything, but if it works, then it's awesome. So, um, so that's what the coalition has given to me besides like, all the amazing and beautiful friends that I got. <laughs> yes, but I think you're, you're very, you're very, very humble when speaking about yourself. And I think that a lot of members from the coalition agree that you have taught us a lot and that we always enjoy working with you on different projects, um, which actually leads me to another question and another point that I think would be interesting to share. Um, and that is that you, alongside Kale, um, have developed um, the Action Tank program. So maybe for um, the new members and the people that are listening to us right now, um, we can share a bit as to um, what the Action Tank program is um, and maybe just uh, your experience um, regarding like creating that whole program and um, our experience with it so far. So what we figured, like when we started with the coalition, we understood clearly that we would like to support our peers in the field of global health because, you know, we understood like we were missing from our lives and we wanted to 
to use the coalition as the tool to like develop that for us, but also for all other early career professionals in global health. And uh, when while we were figuring out like what we want to do and also what we can do, we kind of understood that we would like to support early career professionals to develop, like to act on and develop their ideas. And as we say, like from ideas to solutions together. So uh, the point of the action tank is to support an early career professionals who has an innovative idea to develop it like into um, a prototype or maybe even a pilot, like a pilot stage project, which is something that is presentable to 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 organizations like Catalyst or someone who could actually like fund their project because it's not enough only to have an idea like you have to have an outline or some results like you have to have strategy in place on how you're going to um, to use the money that you get in order to develop your project or initiative and therefore we've developed this program and and the action tank like as a tool to support people who have um, an idea and they think it might work and they're ready to put in the work to actually to actually develop it further and um, and make it work. <laughs> I mean, it's also a good tool like if you, you know, sometimes it's it's like it's fair to say not always ideas are great, but like this is also a stage where you can in just a few weeks understand like if your project is good or not and like what can you do to improve it with people who are passionate and want to help and are willing to give their time and ideas to to help you on that journey. So I think we have um, a question from Matilda. Um, and that is uh, STEM subjects seem to exist on their own in silos. And I was just curious, do pharmaceutical sciences interact with social sciences? And if so, how? Mm, well, I, I believe they do. Like pharmaceutical sciences is like, uh, sorry, pharmaceutical industry is one of the most innovative um, industries there are, like after IT, I guess. So, I mean, they are always looking for, um, for room for optimization and like room to include more and more um, stakeholders in order to provide solutions that that work like solutions that will bring value to to their targeted users so i can't really provide um a more detailed response to this but if it works like we can look into it after the call and i'd be happy to to provide more details when i do my more detailed research on this <laughs> sorry for a disappointing answer <laughs> Um, of course, if anyone else um, has a question, you can also turn on your mic and uh, ask directly. Um, meanwhile, maybe um, Giovanna can uh, tell us uh, a bit about, like you obviously described very uh, detailed what you do, but how does your typical day at work look like? Like, what do you do? So, I wake up, like I log into my computer, I see a million emails, I am tempted to cry, I call my mom, <laughs> uh, I don't, I, <laughs> I mean, um, my role is very communicative, because what I mostly do, I'm like currently a global contracts lead, so what I have, I have a few teams on a few projects, and people in my teams are people who are working on like legal contracts and budgets with the sites, while I pretty much help them finalize those, review them with them and um, communicate with pharmaceutical companies who are developing those drugs that we're working with. Like if they agree with the terms that the hospitals are proposing and vice versa. So, 
So I pretty much like have a lot of emails and a lot of calls throughout my day. And um, it sounds like just a basic corporate job. But the thing is, like, um, because when you are negotiating, you get all sorts of questions. So every, every day is like, so I feel like I get a question that I've never got in my life. <laughs> <laughs> so if you are open and prone to like improvising and like trying to find solutions and you want to collaborate with a lot of people um, because um, we have to like work closely with other teams in order to get everything in there and aligned and as fast as possible. So this this could be an interesting role for you. But if you don't like communicating and you don't like getting a lot of urgent requests all the time, um, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> it is a very stressful position because my team is always the one to blame. <laughs> um, but uh, on the other hand, I've met amazing people here, so I'm grateful. And also it's very good for confidence too, because um, you have to be very firm in order to, to survive all this. <laughs> Wow. What I've learned, like a lot of actually, like most roles in the industry are similar to this. Like they don't work with contracts, but they work with other other tools. However, a lot of a lot of roles are pretty much communication. So I would encourage like any early career professional or student to always work on their communication skills because that's the thing that's going to bring you more most success. Like, firstly, that's how you're going to get the job, because if you're a good communicator, that's going to leave a good impression. And then secondly, you're going to get your tasks done more easily if you can communicate with your team well. And, and you're going to advance in your career better if you're a good communicator, because like if you're a good communicator, you're always going to get your solution. If you don't want to communicate and collaborate with people around you, you're not going to get too far. So and also like it isn't a point for everybody to hate you. Like, <laughs> I mean, it, you cannot be liked by everybody, but uh, if you make an effort to to show that you're a decent human being, that that matters. <laughs> so. Yeah. I think that uh, throughout this li uh, little story, you've touched also on the skills that you need to be working um, in the clinical trials field. And I think that also communication, also maybe ambition, being a team player, it all plays a role. Um, and I think we have al already, that was another one of my questions, maybe what skills do you need to be working? But I think you described that pretty well. Uh, we do have another question from Yulia, um, and that is, what do you like best um, in your current job? Well, besides like it paying for my bills, <laughs> I really like, um, I really like, um, I actually really like working with all those people because um, you get, at least I get attached <laughs> to, to everybody I work with. So that kind of like, learning about all of them and their journeys um that really inspires me on a daily level because like on a global scale like i work in an industry that develops new medications and support people who don't get who don't have adequate therapy currently for their diseases so that's you know it has some value but like every day when i get those thousand emails like and uh, and then i look on teams and there's all the people I, I like, and uh, that's, you know, at the end of the day, everything is about people, you know, the things that you don't like and the things you like, you know, the things that matter in life, not just in work, like at the end of the day, it always comes to people. So that's my response. <laughs> I think that's perfectly said, to be honest. Um, <laughs> Okay, we have another question. Um, this is a bit off today's topic, although I actually I think it is not. Uh, but can you give a few examples as to how coalition helped ideas become solutions? It sounds amazing, and I'm curious to know what you've done. So, 
I guess like defining a solution is a bit abstract, but at least in our in our view, um, solution is a solution is something that um, is a bit more tangible than an idea. So, for example, we had a few ideators that joined the action tank process. And one of the persons, like our first ideator, was a person who was developing a, um, a public health program in India, which was focused actually on uh, female reproductive health. And it was a very ambitious project, which like the idea to realize too. But what we helped like um, them do, like we helped them develop their plans, and we helped them with contacts, and we also like helped them figure out tinier steps. So they like when we worked with them, they didn't develop the entire project, but what they did. They took initiative on like developing their public health campaign and oh sorry um, an online campaign through social media and also uh, the connections that we've provided to them uh, help them with them like trying to do like a really small scale initiative like not on a national level but in a community level like they were connecting some important stakeholders for their project so they could provide uh, the services which they envisioned. And another project that we were involved with was in Kenya and the ideator um, was also, uh, it was a community empowered, empowerment project. So what the ideator was doing, she was helping the community in Kenya like raise funding in order to to be able hmm, so let's let's see how to put this um in a simple way she was pretty much um trying to support a community which was exploited in a way so with her support that community could um could grow like more independence and uh, become more financially independent in order to avoid being exploited or used in, in inappropriate ways. And also that, you know, when they reached that goal, they wanted to, to grow further on that, on their empowerment journey to, to, to like get even more independence and have their own initiatives and new ways to, to, um earn within their communities and also like to like have food supplies etc so so it was a very interesting initiative yes and also to come back to the last example uh, that Giovanna mentioned uh, what we did in Kenya um the ideator the woman who uh, was leading the project and uh, participating in the action tank program um she actually like while doing uh, the whole program with us uh she has managed to um be a part of a international conference uh where she got to present her work so all of the things that she has done with the, our support, um, she was able to present it um, in a conference that was held in Lisbon, Portugal. So all of her work um, kind of got to be known um, to more people around the world. And I think that also helped because um, it gives a sort of um, an exposure to people um, and more people get to know about what you are doing and more people get to help. So um, I think that is also another um, thing that is great to um, highlight. Um, in case we have more question, um, I think we still have um, a few minutes to receive them and answer them. You can, of course, uh, even write in the chat if you've enjoyed this event, if you have learned um, something uh, new, maybe that you didn't know about the world of pharmacy. If um, you have maybe any question for Giovanna. Um, if not, we will slowly be uh, wrapping this event up. Uh, 
um, if you have like any follow up questions, you can also reach out to the coalition or if you locate me on on social media, like you can also reach out to me directly and we'd be happy to to discuss further. I think Giovanna, if you want, uh, you can also leave your email um, in the chat. And maybe if someone has a direct question, they can also contact you. Yeah. But I guess we can move ahead and wrap up. You have a, a congratulations drop in the chat. <laughs> Thank you. Um, OK, well, um, if that is everything, um, I would like uh, to thank you on the behalf of the coalition uh, for joining this event. Uh, since it was recorded, uh, it will be uh, up online in a few weeks. Um, we hope that you have learned something from um, Jovana's story. I think it was very inspiring and that it definitely gave um, a sort of a crash course um, as to how the world of clinical trials looks like and even the uh, short introduction as to what we do in the coalition. Um, in case you want to learn more, um, you can find um, our email address on the website. Um, and yeah, you can contact us anytime if you have an idea for uh, maybe a project of your own. Um, you can um, also um, share that with us. Uh, again, we have um, uh, emails on um, our website. Um, and yeah, we uh, hope that you enjoyed this and we will, of course, be uh, putting out uh, another um, CGHI Young Professionals event in the future, so um, we would be um, happy to have you again. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye.